All right, well, this Saturday marks Earth Day, and for more than 50 years, this day has been marked by school projects, field trips, planting, protesting, mulching, picking up litter, all to promote protecting our environment. You're probably thinking about your class projects now, right? Well, one aspect in crisis is safe drinking water. And a new UN report actually reveals that about 26% of global population does not even have access to safe drinking water. And about 46% of people lack access to safely managed sanitation services. Well, our next guest is the Assistant Secretary of the Bureau of Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs. Whew, that's a lot, right? Well, she does a lot too. Every day she brings awareness to the environment. But today on our show, she's talking about our water crisis and how it impacts countries, cities, communities all across the globe. Many of those communities right here in the United States. Monica Medina, it's so great to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks and for I, having me here. I, I joked that you probably were the overachiever with every Earth Day project <laughs> because it, it's led you to where you are now. And I'm curious, you know, we've been celebrating this since 1970. You and I were reminiscing about our Girl Scout patches. I mean, do you remember learning about the Earth at a young age and why it was important to do I something do. about protecting it? I do. I remember it very well because I went to one of those Girl Scout camps, which so many Girl Scouts go to where we lived in the environment and we learned that we had to take care of it in order to have it for ourselves in the future and I think about it all the time now and I love actually going out and meeting with students who talk to me about it all the time no matter where I go around the world they're interested in this subject and it's one of the things that draws a lot of people into the Foreign Service in fact because they want to help our global environment. Isn't that amazing that something as simple as just going camping as a child, being a Girl Scout, a Boy Scout, or going on a trip, because you, you're you in the environment, you're looking at it, you're, you're realizing, oh, I don't want to litter there where that beautiful area of land is. It It's sort of, it's it kind of subliminally just sort of happens, right? It does. That we it, should care for where we are. It does, and you know, a lot of people during the pandemic woke up to this fact all over again, you know, because they were home and when they went outside, they really appreciated how much they enjoyed getting to be in the environment more days than they would if they would have been in the office. And in fact, we saw pollution levels go down and people went, huh, huh. my quality of life is a little bit better now that I don't have to worry about whether it's a red, a code red day for smog or air pollution. So people did become more aware and it's a great time for us to be thinking about this. Earth Day reminds us, but it's it's something we need to be thinking about every day. Every day can be Earth Day. So let's get real here, right? People want their conveniences. And a lot of people stereotype those that love the environment. Oh, just a tree hugger. Oh, oh. Yeah. We can be very lazy and we take advantage of Mother Earth every single day. I'm guilty of it. My family's guilty of it. We try to focus on doing what's right. So how, how can we help but also have the conveniences that we love? So one thing that we're doing at the State Department is working on a global agreement on plastic pollution. That's something that everyone, I think, can get behind because we see it everywhere in the natural environment. And there are ways that we can cut back on our plastic use or encourage businesses to actually take that plastic back in and turn it into something else again. Or reuse, which is a huge way that we can improve our environment, lower our footprint, and still have some of the conveniences that we love. So we understand that plastic is an important part of the way we live, but we can find ways to cut back on it easily and not sacrifice convenience. Look, we were talking about just the simple, we bring our bottles to the airport and fill up our water, or here at work. I mean, I've got mine right here, right? But companies have a responsibility too. Yes, it's easy to make plastic bottled water, put it on the shelves, it's not yep. that expensive, but then you think of all those plastic yep. bottles. Where, where do you try and hold big corporate America responsible for this as well? And, and do they want to do the right thing? They are wanting to do the right thing. Now, obviously, it's hard. It's a big change. It's going to be an awful lot of systems change to get circularity into our economy more than it is now. But we're working on that. And this global agreement is one way that we can do it because we can't even solve the plastic crisis here at home. We need to solve it globally. These products are, are shipped all around the world. And so if we work together with other countries and every country in the world, 
wanted to do this plastic agreement. We wow. all raised our hands and said, yes, it's time to get a handle on this plastic crisis. We're drowning in it. We see it in our in our food web. We see it even in our bodies. We know it's, it's building up inside us. And so we know we have to do something. And it will take time. But I think lots of companies are coming around, and the ones that aren't are going to, because consumers are demanding better products that have a lower plastic content, that are made from recycled materials. So I'm optimistic. And we talk about the plastic crisis, but the water crisis. I mean, it, it, we, we see the, the, the problems overseas and in these third world countries, but also here at home. I mean, look at what happened with Flint, Michigan. Look yep. at what happened in Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Yes, it's, it's ridiculous. It is. And it's something that I think most people really want to see happen. There's not a lot of public disagreement about the need for clean water and for water for making food. You know, we can't grow the food that we need without water. So we need to find ways to be more efficient, to use water, to share water, and to actually invest in our water systems. This year's Earth Day is about investing in our planet, and this is one way that we can invest. It's good for the economy. We build out new water infrastructure in places like Flint. So we take all those lead pipes out. The Biden administration is spending $49 billion on clean, safe, healthy water, and I think it's because Americans want it. Congress appropriated this money because Americans want to have that basic thing that they know they need to survive and we need it for our businesses. We know that we need clean water everywhere in the world and that's why we had a water week at the United Nations recently where the countries of the world came together to try to solve this water problem together. See that Girl Scout patch of yours paid <laughs> exactly. off. Exactly. Monica, all these years later, it's <laughs> making a difference for us around the world. Yes, every day. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Day. Thank Very you. Very much. Thank you. you. Monica Medina. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.